You are listening to the Pro Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio. Welcome to the Pro Black Perspective, where black problems are addressed with black solutions. Your host tonight is the author of the Pro Black Compendium and Zuberi and the Maroons of Ma'a, the Pan African nationalist Oni. Oni, what are we discussing tonight? Emo Tep. We're going to discuss this universal translator, right? And it's actually fortunate that I didn't record this earlier because I got this new book. Uh, I, no, it's not a new book, but I ordered a book from uh, Asan Imhotep called, uh, well, it's really hard to pronounce. I'm going to say Nesut Betty because that's what I knew it as. But, you know, it's spelled N S W period T. BJT period J and it stands for King uh, among other things but but the whole idea is you know he's going to like in this book he discusses what leadership and kinghood is or kingship is in in ancient Kemet but also in modern Africa right and and you know I said let me let me get this book before I even write about you know, more leadership for, for, for like another book in the future, you know, but it, it helps me with regard to, you know, the brother puts a lot of primary sources in this, you know, you know, to formulate his arguments and, and one of the, and some of the primary sources are from, you know, ancient Kemet themselves, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot, some of them are, you know, Wazungu, you know, sources, if you will, or secondary sources from Wazungu, uh, you know, talking about Kemet, but he also puts down the, you know, the Kemetics translation, uh, or the translations from Kemet, and, and, and that right there, you know, it's, it's invaluable, you know, and, and see, and of course, you know, I, I got to stress that even though I even got that much money like that, you know, I still say to myself, look, I got to go get me, you know, if I know that there's a brother out there, a good brother out there, I'm, 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 I'm going to save up and, and, and get, you know, especially when I, when I when I when I when I feel like it's time, you get what I'm saying. Like I, I understand if if it's like, hey, look, you know, I can't I can't read right now, so I'm not gonna get a book. I can get that. No, I don't actually get that right there, cause like you know, I got all these books that I didn't even touch them. I'm not even touching them, you know. But you know, this this was actually one of the rare cases where I got a book and said, okay, let me touch it, you know, quick, fast, right? But my whole thing is, you know. You got to, that's what you need to be doing. Because the thing with this brother, or even like myself, but the thing with this brother, this is an honest brother, honest researcher, meticulous researcher. You know, that kind of activity on the part of, uh, of our race, that kind of commitment, that's, that, kind, that kind of authenticity, you know, we need to reward that however we can, however it is requested of us, we need to reward that. And if we get a book out of it, that's great. If we don't get a book out of it, that's still great. You understand? But 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 we need to say to ourselves when we see honesty, when we see authenticity, right? We need to we need to support that. And if you're being honest and you're being authentic, you need to start requesting support too. You just say, "Hey, look, this is how you can support me. This is how you can do something for me." People need to hear you say that because a lot of times people don't know they don't know how they can reach out to you. They don't know how they can support you. So, so, so that's another thing that you need to do. You need to start getting into that mentality because it's always going to be, right? It's always going to be, you know, when I was younger, when I was, uh, you know, just starting out with this conscious stuff, I said, let me go sell some buttons, right? It didn't really sell any, but I said, I'm going to design some, some fresh buttons. And one of the buttons I, I designed was this button that said, you know, uh, the quest for knowledge is the quest for instruction, you know, and it had this, you know, this n nice design. It was red, black, and green. It had, you know, Tahuti. It had all sorts of stuff. It was, it was, it was a fly, you know, button, you know, and, and real talk. I just, I just, you know, like sometimes people would say, Hey, can I buy a button? And I say, no, you ain't conscious enough, fool. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like this is art. You know what I'm saying? You can't be getting no, shoot, you talking about, you're going to give me $5 for it, man. Get out of here, man. 
Well, actually, not. Some of them was like five dollars. That's too much for. But like, get out of here, then, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is art. This ain't no, you know, this is exclusive. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Although, come to find out, somebody, somebody did, uh, like I was, I was, you know, flexing with one of my buttons, and somebody pointed out. They were like, "Yo, I saw that button. You know, I saw that. I saw somebody else selling that button." I'm like, "For real?" You know, but that's a whole other story. And yeah, I know, you know, brother selling buttons. Uh, yeah, I know. I barely even sold it, sold any. Uh, but you know, let's not even talk about that. Let's go back to this though. So we talk about the Universal Translator, and and the reason why we bring that up is because there's this passage in the reason why I said it's a good time for me to read to, to do this podcast now instead of later is because I came across a nice passage in this book, Nessu Betty, and and I want to and I think that it would add to the conversation, you know, as opposed to if I would have had the conversation before and I didn't necessarily add this particular passage. But but the thing I want to get into is, you know, this reality of of a lot of people would say that we have an African languages pro- problem. You get what I'm saying? We have too many languages, they would say. And and this is actually, interestingly, there's a paper from a long time ago uh, talking about, uh, like it was written by King of Dahomey or something like that. I, maybe I could actually pull that one up too. But, you know, the King of Dahomey, but I don't know if it was really written by him. You know, because it don't make no sense for it to be written by him anyway. But if it was really translated by him or, or whatever... And, and, you know, it appears inside some white newspaper talking about, you know, he's like, oh, well, we're not united. You know, that's why we fight each other, because we're not united. we got a million languages, you know, yada, yada. Right? And, like, in retrospect, I don't even know if that's, that's even realistic anymore. Because before I was reading it, like, how does white boy, what white boy you know is going to go all the way to Africa and translate an African king, word for word, long speech, and, 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 and be honest about it? You know, and I'm not saying that it's not possible, I'm not saying it's not probable, but but then when you but but you gotta read those things with a grain of salt because that's the only that's the only copy. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's translating it from an older like like from 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 this app you know from this this king writing it. This is the only copy. So so you know it, it, when it comes to that kind of stuff, you gotta use your African mind and you gotta say, look, what part of this is gonna be authentic? What part of this is gonna be honest? You know. And, and, and can I really say that this is what, you know, this brother, this king was saying, you know? Uh, and, and, and like, now in retrospect, when, when you know, when, when, when somebody's complaining about multiple languages, it don't really make much sense in the, uh, in the African context, you know? And, 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 and you would know this if you know any people from the African continent. You know, if you know anybody from the continent, you know that for the most part, all of them is talking about how much they speak eight languages. Oh yeah, I speak this, I speak that, I speak this, I speak. They might say, "Oh, I don't know it that well," but I, but you know, I, I converse with it. You know, and the only people who only the only people I know of, like only people on this planet, really, as far as I know, who only speak one language, are uh, well, no, no, actually, I should say, are pretty much white people and white pe- and people dominated by white people. Like, people who were, like, really, 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 really dominated by white people. And we're talking pretty much the hood. You know, pretty much, well, not the hood, but, like, black folk in America. Like, just black folk in America and white people. Like, like white people. Like, maybe white lower class people, to be honest. You know? Or white lower middle class people. Uh, I don't, I don't, I think the upper class white folk might speak multiple languages. I'm not too sure. But... But as far as I understand, like, like if you go back in time with regards to, you know, white folk, they were, even white people were saying, look, we're going to use Latin as the intellectual language, you know, the language for communicating across Europe, you know, uh, because, you know, even though they had their own language, they wasn't like, and that's the thing you got to notice too, they wasn't like, let's all speak one language, you know, they were just saying, hey, look, we're going to all write in Latin. You know, or or we going or or even we going you know just use Latin together, but you know, on an intellectual level, but like that's it. You get what I'm saying? Like like on an intellectual, on an intergovernmental. You know, I don't even think it was intergovernmental, but but like on an intellectual, let's say intergovernmental, let's say international level, they were going to use Latin, but otherwise they going to speak their own language, and and that's what. That's what it's supposed to be. Or let's not say supposed to be. 
But that right there is a is a is a model that they were using. As I said, they weren't saying everybody in Europe needs to learn Latin. Now 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 they do now that now they do have you know in school you know in, in their western their western schools they would have you you know you, you get the chance to learn Latin. You don't got to learn Latin. But but they 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 might look at you more favorably if you did learn Latin. Because again, that's that's the language of their you know so on and so forth. But 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 that again, it's not it's not the same as everybody got to learn Latin. You understand? Upper class, maybe sure. Eventually, maybe possibly, once upon a time. But but again, it's not that. And 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 that's something else that you got to realize and we we're going to discuss it a little more but but basically this is of course a commentary on on uh on on what we call pan africanism here where we all like yo we all got to settle on one language and that language is going to be kiswahili right and and it's like you know I still think that's a good idea you know I still think that's a good idea I'm actually more biased towards let's create our own language you know, because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm studying Kiswahili now, and I'm saying to you guys one thing is that it got so many loan words in it. It has so many loan words in it. Uh, apparently, to say skirt, skirt in Kiswahili is, I think, well, it's either skirt or shirt. But let me let me, let me check it out. Let me actually do this this translator thing. And, and notice that I'm going to do a translator thing, right? But we're gonna we're gonna go to Google Translate. Well, we're gonna go to let me not Google, but we're gonna go to some translate website, right? And we're gonna we're gonna just search up. Hold on a second. Yeah, all right. Let, let me let me admit though. You know, Google Google is doing a, a dang you know doing a job on translations that we should be doing. You know what I'm saying? And and we're not. So, so you know, yeah. All right. So, skirt in in Kiswahili is sketi, and shirt is shati. You understand what I'm saying to you? And then let's say newspaper in Kiswahili is gazeti. Now, if you understand what gazeti is or what what is what is derived from, it's gazette. Gazette is an English word. The whole point being that so many of these words, like like some like I'm I'm studying this thing, and I'm like I recognize this word. I should not recognize any words if I'm looking through an African language. You understand? There are that 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 tells me that 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 not only is the language getting colonized, not only is the language getting replaced, and it's already been colonized. We all know this because when you go through the, the the days of the month, you know, uh, when you go through the days of the month, you know, you come across some of them. Like for instance, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, you go to Thursday, right? And it's all, like, like, like basically, there's a pattern, right? You know, for Monday, you might say, uh, yeah, I don't want to go off my top of my mind, but Tuesday you'll say Jumanane, right? But then Thursday you'll say Alhamisi. You understand? You already know that's not. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You already know that's not key Swahili. Because, because basically you're saying Juma Nane, right? Would be uh, like the day three or something like that, right? Uh, and then so on and so forth. You know, you, you got, you got you know, Tuesday, when, you know, you all of them are like day this, day that, day that, so on and so forth. But then you come to Thursday and Friday or whatever it is, right? I don't like whatever it is. And that their, their Arab works. You understand? The Arab word. So it's like you, you can't just take that language raw. I mean, you 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 could you could you could take the language raw and you know have your English, have your have your loan words, have all that. But to me, it makes little sense why we are, you know, if we're gonna say let's do an African language, that we're gonna do a, lang a language that's so that's been so colonized at its core, at its root. You understand? That's been co colonized at its root and so deeply colonized. You understand that 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 the official version of it 
is the colonized version. You understand? It's not like it's not like this is the unofficial, you know, old man when we just saying this on the coast. You know, this is this is this is this is key Swahili at this point. So, like I was saying, though, you know, I, I find it would be better for us as a people if we, uh, you know, create our own language. And, and, and my suggestion, I'm going to suggest it. I'm going to suggest the way how we can do that in uh, this next book, you know, because I'm thinking that there's going to be like, like, like you use Kiswahili. I would like Kiswahili as a base, obviously. Right. But I also think that if we're going to get loan words, we got to start looking into our own, you know, our own people. You know, look into, you know, the, the Shona or, well, l let me actually give you some names, bro. Some names that I actually want to use. Uh, let's say we look into the Nok, right? We look into the Sao. We look into, you know, Keme, right? We look into, you know, Great Zimbabwe, that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's other languages. I'm going to say, like, let's say 13 or whatever. 13 in, in addition to Kiswahili. But, but the whole point is that, you know, you, you do that. You know, and and then then you have it. You know, now I'm trying to get back to this. Uh, I'm trying to get back to this uh, where I was before. I uh, started talking. All right, so yeah, so anyway, so now here's the trouble now. So like I said, you know, we talking about you know Pan Africanism. We talking about oh we need to all learn one language, and ain't nobody doing that, right? We think people are doing that, but that's because we don't quite understand what's going on in the world. You know, we don't quite understand what's going on in the world, but I can probably talk about that a little later. But 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 the point being is that like real talk, I'm trying to learn Swahili and and people will say, man, you know, one of the good, one of the good thing about, you know, key Swahili is that it's so easy. You know, that's 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 not true. That's not true. You know, because because a lot of times. You know, a lot of the prefixes and suffixes and so on and so forth, they are not as, you know, like like when you got to use za, when you got to use wa, when you got to use cha, you know, people know what I'm talking about, right? It's not, it's not self-evident. It's like, oh yeah, well, you, you know, because you said wazimo, that's why you got to, like, I don't know what wazimo is though. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, you know, I mean, that, you know, you might say, well, that's just you only. No, no, I mean, it's not an easy language to learn. But on top of it not being an easy language to learn, right? And this is this I'm, I'm going to say right here. When white folk want to teach, like white folk, white folk at this point in time, right? At this point in time, right? We we black folk we tend to be slow and late when it comes to technology, or when it comes to taking advantages of opportunities. You know, white folk once upon a time maybe gave you a tutor. And charge you a bunch of money for it. And the reality is that it's like it's like with the internet. You know, once upon a time, the internet or the computers were like a luxury item. You get what I'm saying? Computers and, and, and the internet were just a luxury item. So if you had a computer, either you saved up a lot of money, or you just you know, you or you just you were just rich. You get what I'm saying? You was rich or you was in a university, you were in school, something you you had some sort of opportunity, you know? And so the model of a tutor, right, paying a tutor, paying for classes for learning a language, right, uh, were, were luxuries, you know. But but with technology, you no longer it was no longer a luxury. You know what I'm saying? Like like, like it became more affordable, it became more widespread, just like the computer. You know, computer now everybody got a computer or the phone, the cell phone. Everybody got a cell phone. You know, there's videos of of people once upon a time. I, I saw some old music video. What this dude is, you know, flexing because he's he talking on this big brick, you know, that's that's in his car or something like that. He's like, yo, I got a I got a car phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, I got a car phone. I'm rich. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what well, I'm rich white boys. I got a car phone. I got a big brick sitting in my car. I'm rich. Or or even some dude might be flexing, like, yo, I got a beeper. Like, how many, how many N-words you know got a beeper? You know what I'm saying? Uh you know, people like shoot. When somebody calls me, I get a beat. You know, and 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 I can go check out that or oh, something. Or I get a message. I get a text. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know what people work. But the whole point is, that was a luxury item. Those was like you was flexing, flossing. You know, you was flaunting. You know, whatever. That was that was then. 
not now. You know, now that everybody got a phone, everybody got a a, a, a computer, everybody, you know, you you can't be like, hey man, come to my class and learn a language. You know, I'll I'll teach you for you know you know hundreds of dollars. You know, because that's still not affordable. We already spent hundreds of dollars on a phone and on the on the on the uh, on the computer, right? And, and the reality is that the computer and the phone don't even cost that much for the most part. Uh, I mean, unless you some sort of you know, you know, unless you one of those fools, so I guess it does cost a lot, you know, for most of our people. But 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 the reality is that you know, you know, like like you get a good phone for you know a hundred bucks, I would say. You know, you can get a good computer. Uh, well, well, I mean, I had you know, you know, you don't really need to get another computer because you already got a computer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like if you don't got a computer by now, you you know, you ain't really interested in the computer. But but. But if you do have a computer, you know, it might have cost you, it might have set you back before, maybe once upon a time, maybe not, because you probably weren't even that serious about computers, so you probably picked one up for $300, I'm guessing, I, I can't remember anymore, but it's, you know, you get a decent computer for that, and, and, uh, and of course, you know, I'm talking about the prices white people are going to pay, but whatever, but the point is, you're going to say, hey man, I'll, tutor, I'll, I'll teach you a language for $300, $400, no! Especially if I'm not going to use this language. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, about his eyes a bully. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't use that where I'm at. Now, maybe if I, and the thing is that if you want to learn language, of course, one of the best ways is to immerse yourself in that, in that area where the language is. And of course, you're not going to learn it right then. But but the reality is that unless you unless you going out and getting that right unless you immerse unless you intend to immerse yourself in some way that they're gonna be using that language right the words you're learning is not going you know it's not you know because 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 what you know when you say because somebody from uh you know somebody who speaks Kiswahili might be like yeah za cha wa I know when to use those because every time I hear za wa cha it's associated with certain words that I already know. You understand? I never heard any of these words before. The last time I heard Zawa Cha, you know, was when I was watching, you know, what what are these these these, these Chinese fight flicks? You know, I was like, Zawa Cha, what cha? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I never heard Zawa Cha in my life. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. uh, but 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 even on that note, what I want to say is that white folk, they got apps like. Like, uh, like this brother was saying inside of the, uh, you know, inside the bit of medicine, uh, you know, well, uh, think tank. He was like, yeah, he learned, he learned, he learned Kishwahili from Duolingo. So I said, let me, let me look at this, this app. And, and the thing is, the app gives you reminders and it gives you just a bunch of, you know, words to translate, uh, just the sentences to translate, you know, at your own pace. And it's actually not that bad. The most important thing though, is that it's free. You know, they pay for it through ads. But it's free, and 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 that right there is the big difference. You get what I'm saying? And this is something that white people use it. You understand? Because because again, you know, even if even if a teacher is more efficient, right? White people say, "Hey, look, let's make it accessible." The thing that we not really we don't understand that this 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 day and this modern modernity is about accessibility. You know, like one time I stopped his brother and I said, look, man, we could, uh, you know, you know, we don't, we don't have to do these grocery stores. We could, we can, you know, you know, get our own blah, 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 you know, get our own industry, get our own farms, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, where would I get my food? And, and don't you think the, the grocery stores is a little bit more accessible? Well, he didn't say that like that. But the whole the whole thing is that accessibility is something that white folk, that, that's part of why white folk got you so colonized, you know? Because when you want when you want water, you don't gotta walk four miles to the good well and then carry that water on your head, that bucket on your head. You get what I'm saying? You could just turn on your pipe. You understand? And some of you not even some of you like, wait, what? Well, I could turn on my pipe. And, and and see, we had cities with you know indoor plumbing as well. So once upon a time, we could just turn on our pipes back in, you know, Africa as well. 
Do you understand? Classical Africa before you know before we were enslaved. We could have just you know oh yeah oh well you just wash our face okay we just turn on the pipe. But you don't have that no more. You know what I'm saying? You got what you call village life, and some of y'all think is that's the African way. No, that's called the, the way of, of, of what happened when we got destroyed. And we had to go rebuild without 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 a lot of the knowledge, because they done took a lot of the engineers, they took a lot of the uh, the a lot of the elders, a lot of the so on and so forth. So so we just had to make do with what we was what was left. And then we like, well, that's the African way. You don't know, you don't know what your way was. You understand? Have, have, you, some of y'all don't even notice. Some of y'all don't even notice that when you go to the museum, you see all these artifacts. And you don't notice that when you go back to the villages in Africa, they ain't making nothing. Some of you're not noticing that. And, and look, I might actually have to put that in my book right there. <laughs> That's a good one right there. But what I'm saying is, you're not noticing that here you are, you know, oh yeah, they were, they were, they were, you know, master sculptors and master this, that, so on and so forth. And then you go to Africa right now, and, and, and you see a bunch of people sitting down on the floor, you know? Or you see a bunch of, you know, soldiers, you know, shooting people. Or you see a bunch of, you know, corrupt politics. You know, you're like, what, what, what? And, you, and, and you're not connecting the dots of, well, maybe, maybe these people right now, right, are not necessarily the reflection of our ancestors that we think they are. They're not necessarily following the ancestral way like we think they are. You know? I tell you, man, you know, you know, some of y'all, you know, this, this is why, this is why... I say that you know some of the smartest Africans, you know, were, were the ones that 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 wrote me, you know, a long time ago and say, hey, Oni, you know, they the, they on the continent, they on the continent, they write me and they say, Oni, can you, can you teach us more about African history? That's that's a smart African right there, because they realize. You get what I'm saying? See, see, you you not a smart African. You gonna be like, I need to learn about Africa. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to you know the African village, and you're gonna go. You're going to go, you know, you're going to see the, the oldest lady you can find. You're going to say, oh, ma'am, you know, you're like, oh, this is the ancestors right here, guys. This is the ancestor. Oh, I, I just, I'll just kiss her feet. She's such an honor. Such an honor to meet you. And she's, you know, she's sitting there, yada, yada. And you bend over, you kiss her foot. You're like, oh, my gosh, ma'am, give me the wisdom of the ancestors. And then she says, well, Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you're not even understanding how colonized you have become. Or what happened. What, how you were torn asunder. You didn't understand that. But, but again, like, I, like I want to I continue on this whole thing of, of accessibility. My cousin, so I have this cousin in England, right? And she was like, I think I was talking to her, chatting her on email or whatever. And she tell me, uh, she says, oh, I'm learning, uh, I'm learning Spanish, you know, because I use this website called Conversation Exchange. You know, you should use that language. You should use that too, you know, because you could get some, uh, like, 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 there's several languages there and you might like one of them. Because I think I was telling her I want to go to Africa or something like that, something like that. So I go to the website and I look up what kind of languages they have available. And surprise, surprise, they did have key Swahili, you know. So I'm looking through the people who was offering Kisahili classes. I think I contacted a few. One of them I contacted was like, yeah, I could teach you, you know? And that was a sister in Tanzania, you know? And the whole idea was that for free, listen, for free, she teach me English. No, she teach me Kisahili and I teach her English, you know? Now, eventually it became, you know, well, I, I'm not really good at learning Kisahili. I was, I was much better at teaching English, but, but, but it also helped that she, you know, she was pretty good in English too. You know, I, I just I was just garbage in Kisahili, so it didn't really make much sense for me to you know use this service. But 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 the whole key to it, and and actually another thing too is that these white boys they produced a a, a ebook, like the, I think the U.S. Army produced the ebook on Kisahili. You get what I'm saying? Like like when I, I'm telling you all this to say, it's free to learn a new language, and 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 whereas yes, there are white people offering courses for learning a new language or there's white people who make it expensive to learn a new language or even inexpensive but there's a cost to it the reality is that that is not available to most of us you know what i'm saying most black folk got bad finances got some of them zero wealth some of them negative wealth you know in debt in credit uh uh financing like like a mug you, you, you remember the housing crisis? You remember the housing crisis was about? 
you remember, right? It was pretty much going to black folk saying, I know you can't pay this. I know you can't pay this loan, but y'all be talking, oh man, we get discriminated against because we don't get no loans. Here's the loan. Pay me back when you can. Oh, you can't pay me back? Okay, repoed. Okay, homeless. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, see, because for some people, when a bank don't give you money, they doing you a favor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when the credit card companies say, look, man, your, your credit score is too low. I'm doing you a favor. You can't pay me back. You understand? Some of you, I mean, some of you, yeah, it, it sucks because it's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm actually invest. I'm, I'm interested in building a business, you know, cupcake factory, and it's going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, research shows that we can actually turn a profit. And the bank's like, uh, no, but I'm going to do that same exact idea. You know, and that's where you, and, and this, Marcus Garvey laid that out in his book. You know, he said, look, don't go to no, nobody and tell them your idea. Because if they reject you, they're probably going to take it. If it's really a money maker, they're probably going to take it. But of course, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't know that. Y'all, y'all, you all want to be slow. You know what I'm saying? You all want to be slow. Let's face it. You want to be slow. Because I know some of y'all be talking, man, you know, the, the movie The Matrix, that was made by this, uh, you know, this, a sister really. No, a sister handed the... Uh, according to the story, according to what happened, or according to what what what's what's said to have happened, a sister went over to these white boys and said, "Hey, I got a nice story," and they said, "Yeah, that was a good story," and then they made a hit movie out of it. Now, 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 some of you be like, "Man, look at that man, black genius," and blah blah blah. No, for me, like, like, why are you going to a white boy? Like, why would you hand a white boy your ideas in the first place? Did hip hop not teach you anything? Did, did rock and roll not teach you anything? Did, did jazz not teach you anything? Did swing dancing not teach you anything? Did, 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 car, did cars and light bulbs and, and like, did nothing teach you yet? Let's go to a commercial. Greetings, everyone. This is Koku from the Bitter Medicine Podcast, inviting you to tune in to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Black people face one problem. The problem of ignorance. This is why those who opposed us stole us from our parents, disconnected us from our continent, and enforced on us illiteracy. But now the ignorance is self-inflicted. We send our children to their machines. We detach ourselves from our motherland. And we don't read meaningful literature. Consciousness is a series of stages. The sooner we get to one, the sooner we are ready for the higher. The pro-black compendium accelerates the beginner to the advanced and provides for the advanced an unparalleled breath. This is the sort of book your enemies do not want you to read, but our ancestors would insist you read twice. You are listening to the pro-black perspective on KWAZ Radio. So we come back and 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 we. Well, I'm looking at this right here. I'm looking at this because I have a template for what I'm reading. You know, I'm for what how I how I do my. How I do these uh, presentations, and so I might get a little distracted when I'm reading it. So the thing is this: it says, "When did we ever have one language, and when were we ever united?" Right? And so here's my thing, right there. You know, a lot of black folks saying, "Look, what we need to do is we need to get one language." What we need to do is we need to get one language. And again, like I said, I realized because you know, black folk, black folk here in America like to say, "We, you know, we, you know, we invented Pan Africanism. You did it." You did it, but 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 they like to say, you know, we invented Pan Africanism, you know, and I'll, I'll give you a definition of Pan Africanism, and I'll, and I'll give you some requirements on Pan Africanism. You see, well, we're going to do a Pan Africanism. We're going to all speak one language, right? And 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 you realize, look, first off, you know, like they said, Kemet was 
a Pan-African nation. Okay? Kemet was a Pan-African nation. And, and, and you see this now more than ever. Right? You see this now more than ever. The, 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 the thing where, like, some different scholars would tell you, look, you know what? Pat, like, like, each city in Kemet might have been a different, you know, a different ethnicity. You know? Each gnome. So you have 42 gnomes. They might have been different ethnicities. That, that's one theory. Right? And I actually like that theory. I, I tend to agree with that theory. But the, the other one, or like 42 different tribes, 42 whatever. The point is that they were di 42 different, you know, that, that's one theory. Another theory is that maybe they were just different, there, there were different language groups. And it might not have been 42 exactly, but there were at least, like, 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 like for instance, right here in this, in this book, Asari Motep lays out, there were at least five. Most definitely there were at least five. You understand? And, 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 and actually, you know, languages change in time too, but, but, but let's not even go into that. But, but, but in that regard, there were, uh, how you say, the new kingdom and the old kingdom and the middle kingdom, they might have been different languages, different language groups, different tribes, different people. You understand? In a sense. Now, 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 another thing that we know for, for a fact is that, and this, this you could go into uh, with another scholar, you know, so, so the first scholar I was talking about, the 42 gnomes, that would be uh, Clyde Winters. Th this one that I was talking about with the five, that's, of course, Asar Emotep, great brother. These, these are all great brothers. And then uh, Robin Walker, you know, he lays out the, 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 the different dynasties of Kemet, if you will. And, and each dynasty is a different family. But each family also comes from a different part of Kemet. You understand? So, so, so again, you know, this could also signify, hey, wait a second, you know, these might be, you know what I'm saying, different people. You understand? Especially if you know how tribes work in Africa. Especially if you know how tribes work in Africa. Uh, or, or, I don't want to say tribes, I want to say, it. but that's what I'm saying, again, if you want to use the word tribes, you can also use the word ethnicity groups. But another way to look at it is different nations. You understand? Like each each ethnicity is in a sense a nation. That's why I say you know you know we got to be the Ancobia, a different nation altogether. You understand? And when we act as a different nation, that's where we can start moving accordingly. You know, and 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 notice too. Listen to me, Africa, the the, the ethnicities were not the ethnicities and the nations were not necessarily bloodlines. You understand? They weren't necessarily bloodlines. Because, because, and Zynga's people, right, were this warrior people, right? A warrior people where they would defeat a people and then say, look, you going to join us or what? And they say, yeah, we'll join you. And then they were initiated into that new ethnic, ethnic group. You understand what I'm saying to you? So that, so that now, if you were to see their descendants, you know, they could have been the conquered people, or the conquering people, or the conquered people who later became the conquering people. But the whole point is that they became a nation. You understand? So, so that's the same with us, Ancobia. You understand? We, 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 we're not... It don't gotta be... You know, you could be from, you know, middle of whatever. You know, literally middle of Timbuktu. You know? And then here I am, you know, over here in America. And somebody else might be, you know, all the way down, you know, wherever. But we all going to be one people, one nation. You understand? One constitution, if you will. You feel me? All right? But 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 let's continue with this, right? You know, the question of when did we ever have one land and when we ever united, again... You know, in Kemet, we were united. In Kenneth Sue, we were united. In Dark Ticket, we were united. In the Sanghei Empire, we were united. Mali Empire, united. Uh, 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 you know, Great Zimbabwe, Mwana Mutapa. Keep going. You understand what I'm saying to you? We was united. But but the question is, what, did we ever have one language? And again, like I said, in Kenneth, we didn't have no one language. You understand? All over the world, you have, you know, Kenneth Sue, or, or you're going to say Kush, Kushunic Empire. All over the world, you got Mesoamerica, you got uh, ancient China, you got uh, Australia, ancient Australia, you got uh, let's see, oh the, the the Middle East, the Sumerians, and all you can say is you know what, all these language groups are related, 
but they're clearly not all one language. Because you might say, oh, well, there's a Proto-Sumerian, but clearly there's a different variation between these languages, and as they keep diverging, you understand you're not going to have one language. And, and you got to understand why, you can, why it's difficult to have one language. Because one of the reasons why you have one language today, listen to me, one of the reasons why you have one language today is because you have uh, a lot of literature and a mass media. You understand? Mass media. Because I had this friend, I had this elder, she's, she's an elder, she's an elder friend, right? And her daughter, you know, uh, you know, you know, passed away, but her daughter went to journalism school. And, and when she was talking, you know, when she was talking, it was like she threw you off because she sound like, you know, she sound like some sort of whatever. But, but, the, but her mother would explain, you know, when she went to journalism school, that these journalists, they study what's called the Midwestern accent. You understand? There's a certain accent that these journalists study. That's the professional accent of, jur of, of journalism. And to say that, th that, that a particular class of individuals went to school to learn how to, you know, that's why you don't, you don't be watching Fox News and you hear, well, down here, you know, uh, I, I so goes to the stores and, and all of these people, you know, you don't hear that. Oh, you don't hear y'all at mine, you know, I, I can't do it now. Forget it. I'm not even going to. I'm not even gonna butcher my own, <laughs> my own my own accent, but but you know I, I I can do a pretty good English accent too. Don't worry about it. But but the whole point is that I know right. How, how you gonna? I, you can't brag about that. I think I could do some you know African accents too. Although y'all gonna y'all gonna trip on me, you know, be like that's not no Nigerian, you know. But anyway, but my point though is this, right? You uh, <laughs> I know how how, how, I, how I gotta do that uh. I did that southern boy, huh? All right. Uh, my point is this, though. You, uh, yeah, they, they go to school for that, but 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 again, that that's part that's part of you know like training, like deliberate training to keep the language the same. Because look at English, right? What we are, what we know as English today, is a result of. Uh, is a result of pretty much mass media, you know, not you know, including books, but also radio and so on and so forth. Because you had old English, which you can't even read. You know what I'm saying? You can't even read that. Or even if you read in some of the language from way back, where how they use the S as an F. You get what I'm saying? But but then eventually, you know, and and then you got like all the weird spelling that America does, you know, compared to England, you know. But a lot of that was, uh, I think, it was the dude, the dude named Webster. You know, Webster's Dictionary. But the whole thing is that it has to, it's a deliberate attempt to keep the language the same and to keep the language united, unified. But without that deliberate attempt, you got to realize that in a time of, in the ancient world, they might not have had that mass media. You understand? Might not have had that, that mass radio. You know, that radio saying, hey, you know, good morning, good morning, family. This is how it works. You know, they didn't have that. So if they didn't have that, how do you expect everybody to know how to say the same word the same? Cause, cause even in even in the black community, you know, we, we talking like, you know, we talking different. And, and 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 I'm sure that if you go to one, you know, maybe maybe adjacent hoods might sound the same. Right? Or adjacent black areas might sound the same. I don't know, some of y'all gonna be like, why does boy why, 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 I mean why does brother keep calling uh why does brother keep calling uh every black neighborhood a hood? You know, because I'm thinking about the hood. You know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking about you college educated, you know, people hanging around in uh in, in neighborhoods you don't belong, you know, the white neighborhoods. I'm not I'm not thinking about y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about the hood. But 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 again, you know, what you got you got ebonics, and that ebonics might not necessarily be the same in different parts of, of, of the country. You understand? But if it does become the same, again, part of it is because of the mass media. You understand? In Africa, you have what, you know, some of these dialects become different languages. And, and, and I, I would reason this, I would reason to say that a lot of what was written in Kemet might have been that linguistical attempt to say, hey, look, y'all drop, y'all pronounce it this way, you all pronounce it that way, you know, whatever. So let's just say what's at the, what's at the heart of, what's at the root of what we're, what we're really, what we're really, what we're really talking about. You understand? We have different groups of people, and, and we all kind of using the same words, but we're using them differently. Let's drop the vowel, right? And and just get at it. You know, if you want to say hotep and you want to say hetep and you want to say hoteperu, you know, whatever, 
Let's do it. But we all know what it is. And and I even drew a picture right next to it and said, we all know what it is. It's like it's like birds. You know, they had pieces. You know, I, I can't remember the symbol, but you get what I'm saying. They, you know, we, we was allegorical, you know, we was poetic. But 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 actually I want to open up this book now. And I want to I want to bring you to this quote. I think the page is 50, but I actually wrote it in front of me. So because uh, I also said to myself, look, this might be a good thing to include in this next book. You know, some of his ancient ancient African writings, right? And here's what here's what this brother says. You know, in Kemet, he's in Kemet. And remember, Kemet's unified. Kemet, the big, powerful, big, bad, best school system. You know, in uh, one of the best school systems in ancient in the ancient world. You understand? Ancient Africa, an ancient world, all of that. Great school system, great empire, great, big, powerful nation. Right? But here's what one of the brothers says when, when he's, uh, or one of our ancestors, right? Says when he's, uh, when he's, he's in Kemet. He says, your speeches are, your speech are gathered together on my tongue and remain upon my, remain upon my, upon my lips. They are confused when heard and there's no interpreter who can unravel them. They are like the words of a man of the Delta marshes with a man of Elephantine. So he's like, man, I don't understand you. You sounded like a dude from Lower Kemet talking to a dude from Upper Kemet. I almost want to go into a, I almost want to go into a commercial for that. Matter of fact, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Greetings, everyone. This is Koku from the Bitter Medicine Podcast, inviting you to tune in to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, family. This is Koku, host of the Bitter Medicine Podcast. In case you didn't know, we have an online book club called the Bitter Medicine Book Club. Every month, we will select a book to inspire the Bitter Medicine Podcast listening audience to read along together. At the end of the month, we will have a call-in show and book discussion. This is a great, dynamic way for readers to not only enjoy a book, but also have others to bounce ideas off of. They say if you want to keep anything away from black people, put it in a book. Don't allow this to be true. Head over to BitterMedicineBlogs.com and subscribe to our newsletter for important updates. Do that today. Join our reading collective today and empower yourselves, your family, and your community. Peace and blessings. You are listening to the Pro-Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio. So, you know, like you just heard, man, the brother was like, you sounded like a brother from another part of the same country. I don't understand you. You know what I'm <laughs> He's like, you sound like a brother with another one. And not, not only that, he even starts off even, even further before that. He says, I do not know what summoned me from my place. It was like a dream, as if a man of the Delta was suddenly to see himself in Elephantine. So again, he was like, Lower Kemet don't even look the same as Upper Kemet. You understand? Like, if you from Upper Kemet, you know, Upper Kemet, remember, Upper Kemet is the black part. The, the, the pure black part. You know, it's just like, you know, Probably got drum circles and stuff, you know, going on outside in the streets. You know, people dancing, people happy. They're like, yo, we black, we gonna rule forever. We gonna rule, rule, rule forever. All we, you know? <laughs> you know, of course, I don't know why they said that. And then, of course, you got, you know, you got lower Kevin, you know, like, you know, you know, one of these days we gonna be, you know what I'm saying? Like, one of these days, them boys, you know, they, you know they, 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 these Africans ain't gonna be too happy. You know, and then you know the, the Africans little came too. Like, well, why are you saying that? He's like, oh, no, nothing, nothing. Uh, I'm gonna shine your shoes. Don't worry. You know, the shoe shine boy. You gonna talk about? Y'all ain't gonna be that. Y'all ain't gonna be singing soon. <coughs> but 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 I say all this to say, this was one kingdom. You know, and and I mean it's kind of like you know like I was doing the southern accent whatever, but it's kind of like you know some parts of the south you can't understand. 
You know, because they ain't got the mass media and they ain't got the books. They don't got nothing, right? You know, so so some of us you probably can't. I probably walk there and they'll be like, hey, blah, blah. you know, hey, never go on blah, blah, you know. And I'll be like, uh, okay, let me just go back in this car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, let me call myself, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, <coughs> call myself a taxi driver or something. But, but yeah, you know, uh, like I said, monolingual is actually hard to accomplish without mass media, without books, you know. And, 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 and again, modern languages today are derivative of, of, of older languages, you know. And they all just separated, all fragmented because it's hard to contain one. You know, English, <coughs> sorry, English, Germany, German, uh, Fran French, all these languages, a lot of them aren't even like they, they were. Yeah, they, they were they were like made up because sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. They were made up. Uh, to a, to a large extent, because they, they like, it's hard to just have a language because people just talk weird, particularly when there's no mass education, particularly when there's no, you know, there's no, nothing holding them to say, this is our language. This is the way how we're going to speak, you know, and you have that in modern day, but it's not necessarily something that was there before. You get what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, like, so you might have the people of you know, Upper Kemet, who, you know, or particularly, like, let's say, the Elephantine and the Delta Marshes, right? Now, they might, they might have just been two extreme cases, but the whole point is that, you know, you might have people from Elephantine who speak a certain way. You get what I'm saying? Who use certain words, who who have... And remember, this is, like, where the formal education is, too. And in Delta Marshes, that don't even sound like a, like, like a place that you should be inhabited. I mean, maybe it is. I, I'm probably going to look that up. That, that, I, I might just have said something silly. Who knows? But 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 my point is that you know the word Delta Marshes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you already know, you know what I'm saying? Like you already know, it, it, it almost sounds like they talk about well, look, these people was like the backwoods, you know what I'm saying? Like they was just in camping, you know what I mean? Like they they they, I mean I don't know because like for all I know this might have been a pretty good uh, good area, but of course it wasn't because it wasn't it was lower camping little kids, right? You know, but but again you know. Uh, but other Kevin might have had some rubric, you know, might have had some, you know, standards might have been like, excuse me, you're saying, you're, you're pronouncing it wrong. It's, 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 uh, untorot. you know, they, they might have done that, you know, uh, but, but, but let's go to, to, to forward. So, so, so the question is, and this is why I said the quest for knowledge is the quest for instruction. So, you know, it's like, well, what, what can we do then? You know, you saying, okay, we don't need no language. We don't need no one language. So what are you saying? And of course, you already peeped the title, so you know what I'm saying, right? We, the technology for the universal translator, I already mentioned this in the last podcast, but well, the technology for the universal translator is coming, okay? And the thing is this, you might just be left out of it. You might just be left out of it. But 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 listen to what the brother was saying, or what our ancestor was saying, once upon a time. He said, look, I don't know what this dude's saying from the lower marshes, but I might need an interpreter for that. So he's saying he's all the way from Upper Kemet, right? And and he's like, I'm not even, I don't even know what these people are saying in Lower Kemet. But there are people who can translate people from Lower Kemet into the language of Upper Kemet. You see what I'm saying? Now instead of having people that you know, because not all of us are gonna have translators. You understand? But like I said, all of us got phones. You know, all of us could get a headset, or all of us could put on a headset. And, 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 if, and if we were just paying for a headset to translate what we're saying or to translate what we hear, right? And that's a universal translator right there. Translate what we're saying, translate what we're hearing, right? We can, we can, we can have that technology. And we don't got to be worried about, well, after all African people don't speak the same language. Because for one thing, with a universal translator, you could, it would help you out in learning a language. And on the other hand, we can contribute to it. And that's why I'm going to go back to Google Translate. Before, I didn't want to say Google Translate because I don't want y'all... I, I don't want to be endorsing no white products. And I'm not endorsing it at all right now either. But I'm trying to let you know what's inside of those products. When, when, when you go to... Matter of fact, let me see. When you go to Google Translate, you know, like, 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 like you can put down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. And, and then they translate for you. They have a button on the side that says Suggest to Translate. Suggest a Translation. Right, and they say 
you know, so I just clicked it, you know, just for, for, just for the heck of it, right? Ah, oh, dang, I can't unclick it. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, yeah, suggest a translation. And it says, your contribution will be used to improve translation quality and may be shown to users anonymously, right? Or when you highlight, you know, suggest a translate, it says, improve this translation. And I say that what you realize is that it's not a computer. It's not a computer. Like, you, some of you have to, some of you should sit down and try to learn a little bit of programming so you can appreciate what programming looks like. But programming is not, uh, is not, you know, oh, okay, it's just the computer's just freaking magic. No, it's people are behind the program. So, so, so everything you see in front of you, somebody's like, like it's pretty much been coded. You understand? And and so it's it's a working progress. You understand? So why people just say, hey, look, we have advanced enough technology to put it like a translator is really easy to do. Well, well, particularly a word for word translator. Uh, a, a non-word for word translator might be a little harder, but it's not that hard. You just gotta put down the conditions. Well, when I have wa between these two words, then that's gonna mean with. When I have wa between these two words, that's gonna mean of. You know, uh, 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 you know. So it's like an if-then statement. You know, it's, it's like a logic. It's like logic you're following, right? But the whole point is that the technology for that is already there. As soon as white boy got voice recognition, you know. Like, hey, Alexa, you know, or sorry, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, government tracking device, you know, uh, I'm on order a pizza. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but the whole thing is that as soon as they had voice recognition, right, that's a technology you should be working on. Because they got the voice chance, the voice recognition, but it's programmed to recognize English languages. You understand? Like I said, watch out, watch out, whatever. That means something in China, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? It don't mean nothing in English. It means something in Kiswahili, and it means something in China. You understand? Know but it means a totally different thing. So, so even if you recognize what is said, you have to translate it. You have, you have to do. So that's what we call speech to text. So, so you need to be on understanding speech, like, 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 like breaking down speech. That right there, breaking down speech into Kiswahili words. That I don't know if that exists. You understand? White boy is working hard at breaking down speech into English words, and, and he's doing it so effectively that he has apps now that can that you, you can speak to. I don't know if Alexa is in you know Swahili land or whatever, but somebody needs to look at that code and 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 and, and break it down and obviously rewrite it or whatever, or rewrite it for us as a people. But the whole point being. Somebody needs to do that. So you got speech to text. Then you need text to speech. Okay? So it's, 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 it's a little bit more straightforward. You just have the words that you want to translate. Right? And uh, you have the words and then you have somebody who already speaking. You know? So you have Alexa, you know. I, I don't know why I'm using Alexa. I don't, I don't have an Alexa. I don't know. I, I think. Or Siri. I don't know what it is. But like, I think I, I, think I, I, think I have, I, I want a television set. So I, I understand that commercials come on and, you know, those commercials, like the commercials impact, you, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, if you don't got a TV, good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have an idiot box, you know, you know, congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but then again, you got good programming like the one I'm doing right now. You understand? You got great podcasts like the one I'm doing right now. I don't have your podcast. I don't have good podcasts available to me. Well, all right, I do, you know. I have some good podcasts available to me. All right, you know. I mean, I got, you know, KWAZ Radio, obviously. And, and there's other people, you know, out there who, who put out some good work. I can't front. But but the point being, okay, I got a TV. You got me. Whatever. Look, text-to-speech, right? Uh, text-to-speech. Now, like I said, perfecting the translation, you know, which, which could be requiring help from everybody, Right? Like I said, you know, Google says, you know, suggest, suggest an edit. They don't just take an edit for, for its word. They they, 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 they they test it against other people. They might even pay them. They might be like, hey, is this a better edit for this? And then somebody says, you know, for, for you know, you know, maybe they're getting $15 an hour or maybe, you know, maybe more, maybe less, whatever. But but they just get a bunch of edits suggested to them and they read it and they say, yeah, that's a good edit. And, and yeah, add it to the program, you know. And then they, they cross check it with other people, you know. Uh, they cross-check the other people who are just sitting down on their computers or wherever, 
you know, looking up edits and saying, hey, yeah, uh, that's a good edit. And, and notice this, too, that that right there is creating employment. An employment opportunity for people, you know, uh, staying at home could be, you know, perfecting this sort of project. And, and you know, you could give it a time limit, too. You could be like, hey, look, we have, uh, we got 10,000, well, we got 20,000 different suggestions. We're going to hire uh, 100 people uh, for over the course of a month, pay them this amount of money. And, 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 you know, if enough of them say, yeah, that's a better edit, then we're going to take it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 and, and, and maybe even more than 20,000 edits. Maybe it could be, you know, uh, they get a million suggestions, you know, and each person gets, you know, so many, you know, gets, you know, what I, but it, they, they test it against each other. And then eventually, yeah, it improves the program. Easy peasy. The, and, and it's employment. And, and notice that that's you creating an employment opportunity for your people. Or even text to speech. You know, you could hire people to speak, you know, hire somebody to, you know, you know, hire a couple of, you know, women or men or whatever that, that have these sort of, and have them just read words, you know, Buana, Hajambo, Habari, Asebuhi, you know, just, just go back and forth, you know, you say, yeah, you get, you get, you get money for that. Easy. Speech to text. You know, you have a bunch of people testing out the product, you know? Just go around and uh, just speak, you know, just just regularly speak and, and we're going to blah, blah, blah. And then you could pick up on the patterns. You know, you have 10 different people saying Azabuhi, whatever. And then you see the the, 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 the the iteration, you isolate it, you compare it, and then you run it through a program and the program says, okay, we'll recognize that when this language, when somebody's, you know, when somebody's vocals go X, Y, you know, go this way, in this sort of pattern, Right? We're gonna register that as Asabuhi. And then we're gonna we're gonna go out and we're gonna test it again and see if see if these words pop up as these people are speaking again. And you just keep doing that, you do that with enough people, and you can isolate all the phenomes, all the all the in inflections, all the so on and so forth, and you get the speech to text. You get the voice recognition. And then all you need to do is then, like I said, you know, you, you, you might make it a headset, right? You might make it a helmet, you might just make it your phone app, you know, your phone. You know, you just put the earbuds in your ear, and then you can make it so that when you talk into the, the the headset, you know, microphone can translate everything you say. You understand? Microphone can translate everything you say for like for two hours. You know, so I can walk around. I can do this podcast right now. Have my phone plugged in with a headset. Everything I say is gonna come into my ear and keep my heat. You understand? So now I might be like, you know, you know, you know, how are you, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then eventually I hear Habariz, Habariz, uh, well, I want to say Habariz, uh, Zabuhi. I want to say Habari Ghani. All right, yeah, let's say Habari Ghani. Then I just hear Habari Ghani in my ear. And then I might say it again, you know, how are you, Habari Ghani. And I just keep hearing it whenever I'm talking. And then suddenly, you know, I just pick up on it. I don't even got to, I could just be like Habari Ghani. Do you understand? Or it could be a chance that everything that I say for two hours so that when I'm talking to somebody else, the phone speaker is going off. So I'm like, yeah, so, uh, you know, how, how was your day? You know, like, 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 let's say I, I, I'm, I, you know, bump into a, you know, let's say, let's say, let's say you're a young bachelor, you bump into a pretty woman and, and, and you walk up to her and you just, you just start, you just start saying your game, you know, you, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, man, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm so captivated by your enchanting smile. Now, I don't know how to say that in, uh, in uh in Kiswahili, but you know I know I'm gonna say it in Zuri, you know, she, you know she, she you know she gonna hear all all the, all the, all the game that 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 that, that, that you spit it, you know she gonna hear all that she gonna be you know oh man he just said in Zuri and he just said you know you know all that and 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 uh you know and that's it, you know the phone doing it and you just speaking or you could have it like as I said like a translator like as a helmet you know the helmet's playing the noise or a headset. You know, headphones, you know, whatever it is, you know, it can play in your headphones, it can play in your headset, it can play over your mic, whatever it is, though. The point is that that right there is the universal translator. That right there is the universal translator. All the technology is at your fingertips. You need to open up your app. You need to do some, you need to do some work. You need to pay some people. You need to, you need to create a business. You need to, you know, you should, you should go to GoFundMe be like, hey, look. We're going to make this universal translator app. we got enough computer programmers. Or even if not, it doesn't got to be that. It could just be a voice recognition thing. It could just be, hey, you know what? We're going to make a website. What we need for all black folk is to, to read these words, you know, read these words in front of them. 
Just, just read this and record it and send in your submission. You know? Read 10 sentences. You know? Re or, or read 100 sentences. Or you can just say, read 100 sentences and get 10 bucks. You know? Or, 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 or you can even be cheaper. You know, re re read 1,000 sentences, get 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Black folk, you know, he's like, oh, easy way to make it, um, easy way to make $50. You know? Or just read 1,000 sentences. You know? And, and just read them clearly. Re read, no, read them how you, how you would say them. You know, hey, 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 man, what's going on? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, it's all good, man. Shoot. Yo, that girl was looking good. Nah, man. Shoot, man. You know, you know, I know how y'all talk. Y'all be, you know, Chris Brown. You know <laughs> But anyway, you get what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is this. Look, maybe, and this, this is the whole theme right here. Maybe, instead of worrying about everybody speaking one language, that's really not that easy to pick up, especially in the middle of America. You know, if I was in the middle of Tanzania, sure, I'd probably, you know, pick up on Keats right here quite quick. But in the middle of America, where, you know, ain't nobody, you know, really talking to me in it or expecting me to discuss them, discuss with them in it, it don't make much sense, right? But with a universal translator, right? And that's the thing with this universal translator, too. It's like, again, in America, might not even, you know, make much sense. But you go to Africa now. You understand? And some of you might be like, well, look, man, we can just learn the language. If we can be immersed in the situation. We can just learn the language. But again, you go back to the brother from uh, from ancient Africa. He's like, I don't know what these Delta Marshals are saying. I need an interpreter. And and, and some of you, some of you understand that y'all need interpreters too. You know, the thing the thing with us as the people is again, you know, we like like they say in vet like they like like I guess it's white boys who say it, but they say uh. Well, as far as I understand, it's white boys who say it. They say necessity is the mother of invention. But but the thing is this too. Some of y'all see a necessity and still don't invent nothing. I, I gave you an idea, the universal translator. You know, and I didn't even copyright it. Now now look, but uh, this is the thing though, it's black copyrighted. So if you're a white boy, you listen to this and you're like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Forget it. You know what I'm saying? L you know. I know, I know. It sounds silly to tell you to let the let the brothers and sisters have it, but but uh, you know, I know you ain't gonna listen to me, but <laughs> but but you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is copyrighted. So you know, see you in your white court, you know, see you in your white court, and if you win in your white court, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm still going to take your ass there, maybe possibly. I'm probably not even going to, but uh, but yeah, black. And the thing is this too, like, like real talk, black folk. You know, you could do it. You could do it. Just just make the technology. You could do it. You know, even if white folk trying to make it, if white folk make it. And real, real talk, white folk are even trying to make it for you. They're not going to try to make like Like, they're going to have the English to, to French translator, the French to, the French to Spanish translator, and you're going to be sitting on your, you know, sitting on your whatever, talking about, man, look at that, man. White folk, they made a translator. You know? Now we got to speak English because that's the best language. It's translated into, it's being translated. It's in the translator, you know, with a with hundred different languages, including Klingon, you know, or whatever, you know, like including alien languages, you know, all that kind of stuff, including fictional languages, you know, and, and I bring that up because this Duolingo website, uh, I mean, Duolingo app, they got fake languages there. I think they got like some, you know, fantasy, like elf language. And, and they got that Star Trek language. Like, like is, that, is that real? They got that much time on their hands. They got that much uh, effort on their hands. You know? Th that, 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 like, they got that much. They're doing that much for their own. And, and, and it's only upon you to say, hey, look, let me get this Yoruba to a Khan translator. Let me do that. You understand? And another thing I want to say, just real quick. You know, I saw this movie... And it was in Spanish, but it had English subtitles. If y'all really wanted to share your language, share your Kiswahili, you would have had, you would put all your stuff in Kiswahili and put the English language on the bottom. Put the subtitles on the bottom. Because that's how a lot of people pick it up on these, stupid, on these, on these, these other languages. Anyway, thanks for, so much for listening. I uh, hope I didn't go too long. Uh... But yeah, Shami Amotep. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join hands with your brothers and sisters as we uh, recite the African affirmation together. 
It's a call and response. So follow my lead. We are an African people, robbed from our homeland, robbed of our names, our languages, our cultures, our religions, our womanhood, our manhood, our sisterhood, our brotherhood, our motherhood, our fatherhood, our selfhood, our nationhood, and our self-respect. But we shall rise, never to fall again. Up, you mighty race. You can accomplish what you will. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace.